Today, we're going to take a look at exposing an image using only local adjustments. So let's go ahead and jump right into On One Photo Raw. This photo was submitted by Andrea Beeson, and we're just going to go ahead and make a nice monodramatic. I don't know if that's even a thing, but let me know in the comment section below if it is a uh, black and white image using only local adjustments. So let's go ahead and reset this image. We're going to hit reset all. This is going to get us to the original uh, version of the photo. As you can see, I had it cropped. So we're just going to hit the C uh, keyboard or key on the keyboard. Now, uh, this photo was already aligned on the rule of thirds using this uh, intersecting point here. But I just felt like there was too much negative space leading into the house. And I want this photo to be more about the house. This is just a personal preference. You can edit your photos the way that you would like. So I'm just going to tighten up a little bit and give this house more prominence in the image. Now, uh, I'm going to probably crop this a little bit more than I did uh, the original edit, but this is probably about where I would want it, giving uh, or leaving a little bit of the sky and then obviously keeping the, uh, the foreground interest in there, but really giving the house a majority of the frame, right? Um, I can even crop this in a little bit tighter and really make this about the house. So uh, lots of different options available. Maybe even pull this over a little bit. I don't want to necessarily center it because I do like the uh, position of, you know, giving some context that, you know, this is kind of leading in or below the house, given the hillside. If you crop in too much, uh, it, it's not very clear where we are in relationship to the house. So I want to help the viewer see that. Uh, cropping really does help with telling the story. Um, so maybe something like this. I think this will be good. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And now I have the house that I'm going to work on and it's time to expose this. Well, the very first adjustment that we're going to make is a, uh, we're going to remove all of the saturation by clicking on the add adjustment. We're going to rename this just so I can keep up with what it is that I'm doing. It's going to be our black and white adjustment. I'm going to clear out the exposure and bring down the saturation. Now, as you can see, it's not doing anything. What you can do is you can invert this mask, right? Whenever you turn on a local adjustment, by default, it's uh, the mask is all black and you have to paint in the adjustment. Well, if you want the, the reverse of that, you can click on invert or you can hit command or control I to invert it. Uh, and if you caught my live stream on keyboard shortcuts and you set your keyboard shortcut up to do something different, then you use whatever keyboard shortcut is necessary. I'm just going to use my stream deck. That's going to flip this photo into black and white. Now that's a very basic adjustment. This is not going to give you the control that you would if you ran a black and white effect. Now, I'm just showing that you can do this in the local adjustment section. You can edit your photo however you wish, doing whatever you want. Um, I'm just showing you a different way if you get tired of doing things the same way, right? So next thing that we're going to do, I think that it's a little too bright right now. So I'm going to bring down the exposure and that's just going to get like the mood set. Uh, and then I want to contrast it a little bit. And this is just my my exposure. Um, I'm setting my exposure for the entire image. And then I'm going to go in and do some more localized edits. So I want to get my black point set holding down the J key. I can see that I have some clipping going on over there. So I need to pull down on my highlights. And now that is gone. Uh, but... I need to open up my shadows because I don't know 
if I have all the information that I want and looks like there's some shadow detail in that area that was clipping, I may have to do a local adjustment just to take care of that piece. But what I'm trying to do is get a true black point. And as you can see, I'm starting to get some uh, clipping going on there, but that's, that's kind of okay. All right. It's underneath the uh, deck of the house. Not a big deal or a shack. I don't know what these are, uh, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, and I think that's all I'm going to do. Let me see what my midtones will give me holding down the J key again, just to get the clipping mask. And what I'm trying to uh, figure out is where my middle grays are for real in this image, uh, which I think this is probably a good adjustment for it. It brings a, a lot of, um, depth. So obviously before and after we're just getting started, but that's the black and white adjustment. Now we're going to, uh, focus on building more drama into the image. Now, the way that I like to do this and everyone can do their, their own thing is I like to use a, uh, a vignette, put it centered onto the thing that I care about the most, which is the house. And then I'm going to spread it out. And that instantly brings a level of drama to the house. Now I'm going to increase this. So we'll just call this vignette. Uh -oh. Vin hit enter. Um, and what I also like to do at this point is destructure some of the surrounding areas. So that way the, the real attention stays on the house. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger because I don't want too much of the house to be destructured, right? If I hit, O, uh, you can see what the mask looks like. It's protecting everything here and then gradually fading out. But we're really getting that destructured area down here at the bottom, up here at the top in the sky, which is fine. Uh, that's what I want. All right. At the same time, we're also uh, lowering the exposure. So that should help a little bit uh, with this area over here that was giving us the clipping earlier with the highlights. So now that I have that set, my, vin, uh, my vignette is set up the way that I want it to. I have the drama. Now it's time to actually start to build upon uh, like shaping light in this image. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to click on lighten. And this is just going to be light areas. I'm going to bring in some light around the image. Uh, the way that I like to do that, and I'll even add in a little bit of structure to this light and we'll open up some shadows, maybe bring the exposure down. This time I'm going to use the actual adjustment brush and there's a little path right here. And then uh, I'll bring a little bit of attention to these uh, leaves here or bushes, whatever it is. Um, and then that'll probably be it for this particular adjustment. So all I'm gonna do is paint over this. And this is the area that is already a little destructured, right? So we'll make this brush a little bit larger and I'm going to bring the opacity of this particular uh, stroke that I'm about to apply. I'm gonna bring it down compared to what I had for the road. And you see how it's just adding in a kiss of light here and there. And this is just really building um, some some interest in the foreground. That's all I'm trying to do. Build a little bit of interest in the foreground, but not too much that it overpowers my subject. Now, what I'm going to do next is choose a different blending mode for this light. I like to use light uh, lighter color. Now you can use lighten um, as well, but I think lighter color it just it, it works a little bit better for what I like 
and, and what I'm trying to do. Now, this is a very uh, precise mask, so to speak, right now, especially this harsh one that's going right up the middle because I was at 100%. So what I'm going to do is feather this a little bit. That way it spreads and it looks way more natural. All right. Now, at this point, you can crank up your adjustment. And I like to go a little overboard just to see what I uh, can get out of this. And then if it becomes too much, then you have this opacity slider and you can pull this down. And this is why I enjoy doing this with local adjustments, blending it back in with the original. Remember, this is going over a vignette, so it's already dark down there. And now we're just adding light in locations where we want it. Now it's time to do a little bit of dodging and burning. Um, so we're going to add another adjustment. This one we're going to call dot or burn. I'm sorry. We'll start with burn. And uh, we'll bring down the exposure. Not so much because we don't need it to be that much. Um, and we'll even bring down the shadows just a little bit. And we'll bring down the blacks a little bit. And I think that is going to be good. Now, the way that I like to use dodging and burning with whatever I'm adjusting using local adjustments is by adding a luminosity mask. So I'm going to hit the button on my Elgato Stream Deck and then hit the letter O. This is no longer the image. This is the mask. Uh, and I'm going to hone in on all of the darker areas. So the way that I do that is I just pull this mask until I start to see those dark areas become bright because then that lets me know that I am starting to select those areas and then the brighter areas I'm going to make darker. Now, what I may end up having to do is inverting this mask uh, because it's selecting all of the bright areas. So. I can do a reverse mask, so to speak, where I only select or I, I'm selecting as much of the bright areas as I can. Uh, and if you're not familiar with masking, everything that is at the current moment, everything that is white, the uh, effect that I have applied is starting to show up on the image and everything that is black, the effect is being removed from. So uh, what I'm going to do is select as much of the bright areas as I can by pulling up on this window of uh, cutting out the darks. So it's only leaving the lighter tones in the image. Um, maybe even reset my levels and really just hone it in on this area right here. And Maybe need to come down a little bit more. Bring this down. And this is a hunting game. Once you find what you want, I think this will be okay, at least for right now. Um, yeah. So now I'm just going to invert this mask. And as you can see, I have all of the darker areas selected now. So all of the areas that are white, those are the dark areas in the image. So if I hit the letter O, you can see there's a little bit more contrast uh, being built into this image. So I'll turn it off and you can see how uh, it's not dull. There's some there's some contrast in the image right now. But as soon as I turn it on, look in, look at these darker areas up here and then look down here uh, and watch the change in the image. You see how there's just a little bit more depth to the image. Uh, this is one of my favorite ways to add a uh, burn and even a dodge. Now, with the dodge, I'm just going to go with the brightest of the brights. So I'm going to hit Add Adjustment. We're going to label this one Dodge. And then we're going to hit Lighten. And I add a little bit of structure uh, to my lighter areas. And then we'll open the shadows on this one. 
I'm going to hit my luminosity mask quick key. And then I'm going to hit the letter O so I can take a look at the mask. This time I want to eliminate everything from the shadows and only focus in on the brightest areas. I'm not going to invert the mask this time. So, and I only want the brightest of the brights. Now, since the house is white, there's going to be a good amount of bright areas on it, right? That's just the way it goes. It, white is usually uh, bright. So I'm just going to pull down on this uh, and find where the brightest of the whites live. And that's what we're going to select. So as you can see, as I pull down on my uh, brightness or on my level slider here, I'm starting to really hone in on specific areas. And you can see where uh, it's really bright over there. There's some brightness uh, going on here. And it's excluding a lot of the shadow tones, which are down here in the grass, which is great. So I have a good selection on my house. Uh, where I'm running into a little bit of an issue is in the sky. So I'm probably going to have to manually adjust that. But that's okay. Let's go ahead and hit O so we can take a look at our image and we can see what's being applied. Now, this is being applied pretty uh, strictly looking back at our mask. So I'm going to feather this until I feel like I have blurred it enough that it just blends in uh, with the overall image. Now, this is something that I recommend you actually look at while you're doing it uh, and then turn it off and on. As you can see, the house is just starting to get like this, this glow to it. Well, I need to, I'm going to dial this back here in a little bit. And I'm also going to apply this to a blend mode. Um, what I wanted to do is just get the adjustment. So now I realize I need to fix my uh, sky. I don't want this to go crazy and get blown out. You see how it's getting blown out. So what I'm going to do is bring my opacity back to 100, my feather at 100. And I'm going to use the perfect brush hitting command R and I am going to paint over this area right here. It's okay that it looks a little weird. The reason I'm using the perfect brush is so I don't get this on my house. And now I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. Come right here and I'm just getting this sky area because I don't want this adjustment to my sky. Now I can turn off my perfect brush now that I've uh, gotten this around the house. Make my brush size a little bit larger. No, uh -oh, don't want to hit the house. There we go. And I'm just going to paint over the sky. All right. Now, your adjustment, whenever you choose to do this, will be your thing. All right. However you want to. But. For me, I don't want this adjustment in the sky. I only want to uh, target the house. And that's the beauty about using local adjustments um, and masking in general and on one. So I'm going to just tidy this area up a little bit. Okay, so now that the mask is painted in the way that I want it to, obviously our house looks like it is glowing and that is not what I want. So what I'm going to do is pull down on this opacity slider and really only hone in the effect as much as I want it to be. Uh, and then we're gonna take a look at using the lighter, lighter color blend mode just to see if that does anything different. Um, I think screen actually looks pretty good too. It, it just gives like this nice glow to the house. Uh, we can go with lighten. There's a lot of different options available. Now, what may be value added is messing around with adding in this adjustment to just the highlights. Uh, now, I don't think that that's targeting much of anything. 
So you'll probably have to increase the range to bring back uh, that adjustment and, you know, dial it down, especially with the opacity being lower. That might actually be good right there. So uh, with the light and blend mode, adjusting it to the, just the highlights, bringing up the highlights and, and working with the opacity, uh, you can really get some fine-tuned adjustments. This is why I enjoy working with local adjustments on my photos. Um, now, I think this is essentially done with the exception of my final touch, which is just a structure enhancement. And this enhancement, I like to paint on with a brush. Uh, and all I do is increase the structure quite a bit uh, because I'm going to mess around with the opacity of this. Hit Shift X and get my brush to paint in. This is one of those adjustments that I am okay with just painting this in. Um, and I'm going to paint this kind of crudely because I don't need it to be 100% precise. All right. Um, and that's at 100%. Let's see what this looks like off and then turn it back on and then maybe bring the blacks down. All I'm trying to do is really bring some definition to the house uh, and make it make it pop a little bit. Um, turn it off, turn it back on and I think that I think that'll work. Didn't do a whole heck of a lot. I can even bring the exposure down and mess around with adding this just, nope, not a blend mode. Uh, actually, I might be able to use overlay. Well, because of the exposure, it's not gonna look right. So I'm gonna have to bring the exposure piece back up. But for just the, the sharpening, maybe even pin light, Nope, not gonna worry about it. We'll just go to the shadow tones and apply it only to the shadowed areas. And that's where the contrast is, which is why I'm, I'm targeting the shadowed areas. Um, in fact, you know, I didn't try this before, but maybe we can do a color range mask and we will make this black. There we go. And let's hit O, see where it's applying. So I need to add this to only the areas on the house. So we'll pull that down. Pull it down some more. Okay. And then I wonder if I can. How does that look? Turn it off and on. Yeah, I, I could live with that. I could live with that. Okay. So this is structure. I don't know if I spelled that right or not. Oh, well. So the last thing that I think I'm going to do is really just bring uh, with a low opacity. I'm just going to bring this this door, the highlights on the door down a little bit. And all I'm going to do is brush over it one time and mess around with how much I want to bring that down. Don't know. Yeah, I think that, that, that works. I don't like it. I'm not gonna do it. All right, so there is the final image. The before is nice, it's colorful. 
Uh, but the after, I think, is a little bit more moody. Um, it's a black and white, and we did it all inside of the local adjustment tab. Now, if you wanted to, you can go to effects and you can add in some sharpening, which would really make this punch a little bit more. Uh, so by adding in some sharpening, I mean, you can see instantly how it is applying overall. Uh, but what I would probably do is come back to local, find a mask that I think maybe even the Dodge mask, that could be a good one to use since we want to sharpen like the, the brighter portion. So we'll hit copy and then we'll come back to effects once it copies and we'll click on the mask and we will paste that mask. That is not the mask. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with on one. It is. Uh, it's tripping. So, you know what? We'll do it real quick then, because this is just how life goes, right? We'll hit loom, hit the letter O, and you don't see any difference because it doesn't look like it's doing much of anything, but we're going to get rid of all of the dark tones and uh, by using the window slider. And we're going to find all of our brighter tones that we want to apply this sharpening to. Uh, and, and then I think that will do quite well. I'll paint out the sky uh, here in a little bit. So we'll hit O. And as you can see, it really brings some definition back into the image. Uh, we may even feather it a little bit, but I don't know. I don't think feathering it does it any justice. So no feather. Take the feather off. Um, and we'll leave it like so. Uh, I, you can obviously paint out the sky so that way you're not sharpening the sky because that just doesn't make any sense. So we'll go to our masking brush with a, oh, I better pull up the opacity to 100% so that way it's actually painting this away. I'll do it like that. Hit O. Oh, I still have the perfect brush on. Well, that's good for me to get these edges around the actual house. Hopefully getting rid of some of that glow and just tightening it around the structure itself. That is the beauty of using the perfect brush. Uh, it works well. Um, you know, take it for what it's worth. It does work. Just not as great as... I think some other selection tools would be, but I'm not mad at it. I can use the selection or the perfect brush and make do with what needs to be done. And then we'll make it a little bit larger, turn off the perfect brush and yeah, you can paint over this. I'm not going to bore you guys with watching me paint out the sky. I think you understand what it's like to paint away a sky um, and you know make your adjustments whatever you need them to be so i'm gonna hit o and we'll just call that good uh, but obviously take some time do what you need to do here is the before the sharpening and here is the after sharpening now you can always crank up your amount on the sharpening right uh, there's no reason to shy away from over sharpening because you can just pull your opacity down and then fade it in to the point that you want it to be. There's so much control that you have over your image using on one photo raw. So no reason for you not to experiment. And if you don't like it, turn it off. All right. So here is the before image. Uh, and here is the final after image. All right. So hopefully that was a nice walkthrough with using local adjustments for you. 
and you found value in the video. If you did, smash the like button. If you want to see more content, check the screen right here. Also, go over to www.freewillphotos.com to find out more about what's going on here with Free Will Photos, YouTube, and just the photo learning uh, center as it is. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.